Welcome to the Audrain Museum Network here on YouTube. If you like these videos, and we know you do because there have been millions of views, be sure to subscribe. And also, of course, hit the bell icon to be notified when we put up great new content. Welcome back to our exhibition, Collecting Moving Forward, Young Timer Classics, here at the Audrain Automobile Museum. And we're looking more closely at some of the vehicles in the uh, exhibition. And joining me today for this view is our friend Jay. How are you? Jay, you know, this is a really important thing. You know, Young Timer Classics is something that really speaks to us because as we've had many conversations, collecting always does evolve. Right. The cars that we were interested in when we first started getting into collecting were cars that are 10 or 15 years old. And today, these are the cars from the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. And, uh, this particular car is one which I have always been fascinated by, the Porsche 928. This is a 1993 uh, GTS model, one right. of the last models made. And me being GT man and sedan man, right. this, this is my kind of car. It's interesting, but not enough to get you to buy one. And that's the problem. Like, this is a car I could have afforded when it came out. And I looked, at, I remember looking at the EB110 Bugatti at the mm. time. I remember getting in and being unimpressed with the dashboard, which is basically literally a piece of wood with gauges set in it. Seemed sort of amateur. It didn't ha didn't have that feel. It would, but it was speaking to the to the feeling of the time of the, the Bugattis. The, no, but the Bugattis built in a period. I mean, they right, were very but fancy. It, but it, it didn't, but. It, and, and plus, it was very cramped. And I went, mm. this uh, at the time, at the time when it came out, I thought it was maybe. Too much luxury, not enough sport. But I might have been wrong. You were absolutely not wrong. I think that the Porsche engineers and designers did exactly what they set out to do, which is to make a Porsche Grand Tourer. They'd right. never done one before. Well, this has the same problem the SLR Mercedes had when it came out. The car you should have is not the one you want. <laughs> to me, Aston Martin always answers the question for a lot of people because it's extremely luxurious. But it's a real sports car, but it's, it's, it's got more grand touring than you know, some of the hardcore Porsches, top of the line 911s, are just a little too uncomfortable and noisy for the street. You know, any, any car, my wife is going, ow, my hair. <laughs> this is not an ow, my hair car. But when you look at this, you, you say, well, should I get a Mercedes high performance sedan for essentially the same money and a real back seat? Because this really, has no back seat. Well, this, this answers the same question that Ferrari asked with the 400, 365, 2 plus 2, and then the 400 and the 412. The idea that people wanted their customer base was maturing. Right. You know, businessmen weren't getting any thinner in the 1970s. Um, and so why not have Porsche or Ferrari performance in a more comfortable, right. manageable package? The I idea that this would replace the yeah. 911 was a strange idea in 1978. Right, and also, uh, see, the 400 falls below. I would rather have this than a 400. Why? Uh, because it seems more of a sports car to me. You know, I mean, to me, during that period, Ferrari was building cars as an afterthought to keep racing going. So they didn't seem as committed to the, well, let's build a sedan and, and put it out there. Maybe some of our customers will buy it. I'm sure it was fine, but it wasn't fine-tuned for the market, you know. And Porsche has the same problem Harley Davidson has. It's heritage. People want, Harley was so afraid ever to change. Look, new hand grips for 98, you know. that They never really made any because nobody wanted, they wanted that dum dum dum, that potato, potato, potato kind of sound of a Harley. You, you hit the nail right on yeah. the head, Jay, because marks that have very loyal followings. Right. I mean, you remember what happened when they introduced the 911. Yeah. People who loved Porsche, who knew the 356, thought, what the heck is this? Right. It's not my 356 that I love, that, that yeah. won all the races in the 1950s. This car is bigger, it doesn't look the same, it's, it's just not their thing. And so, again, the transition from the 911 to this was also sort of... Well, a, more recently, the C8 Corvette. I read thousands, not thousands, but tons of comments it doesn't have round taillights. I will never buy one. It's not a Corvette without, <laughs> without the Corvette round taillight, which it has had since the first day. You know, uh, okay. These were not, I don't know why. I, I remember when the GTS, this version came out, mm -hmm. 
and it suddenly went to 5.4 liter and had four valves. Ooh, then I got kind of interested, but you know, we always want something that's better than what we're actually capable of doing. And I realized this probably would have been better suited, but it's not really a four seater car. So why put the back seat in it? Yeah, you the, can't well, carry although, although the interesting thing, of course, you recall that every 911, except for some very special variants, had are two plus twos. Right. They have those little back seats. But that, that's for insurance reasons. And it, exactly. It, 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 and you can carry four people in a 928 for a short distance. You're not going to drive yeah, across the country. This you know? is the new Coke problem. You make Coca-Cola, it's the finest soft drink, it's delicious. Now we have something better. Hey, 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 wait a minute. You told me the other one was the epitome. That, I mean, this is such a radical departure. You know, you can't make overnight changes. To auto I mean, the Chrysler Airflow, the 1933 Chrysler, oh my God, what a magnificent statuesque automobile, a, a proper grill with an ornament on it and the free the headlights and it, it looked fantastic. And then all of a sudden this streamlined thing came out. What? It didn't look Which is like absolutely that. wonderful, yeah, I mean, but completely different. Yeah, engine in the back is best. We, we think it's best. Okay, forget what we said last year. Now we have the engine in the front, that we, air cooling, who cares? This is water cool. It was, it really was, it was a Porsche, quote, in name only when it came out, even though it was, a, I mean, I'm just making the argument at the time. Sure. It was so radically different that, and it, it, it was really like spinning in the eye of all the 911 owners. And this is the point that I think is, all those things you mentioned are the reasons why it's become such a sought after collectible now, because people are understanding and accepting the dynamic qualities of the 928 for what it is. It's not a 911. That's precisely right. why you buy right. this. It's Porsche's vision of a car like this, which is very un-Porsche-like, if you and want And it to was fast, but not fast enough. It was powerful, but not powerful enough. This makes a better classic than it did a better new car. For example, the Lamborghini Miura was not a very good sports car when it came out. It was, I mean, it was fast in a straight line, but it was unstable. It was, as a classic, oh, it's the most wonderful car to drive because the engine's right here, it's behind you. You know, it's a, it's a fabulous car to drive swiftly. It's a frightening car to drive fast. Which brings up a great point about how we use cars. Right. Because we're not going to use the maximum performance of a car like this today in a collector car setting. And this is not a car you're going to take out for track days. So um, the fact that this car is here, and, and this example, which is a very rare example in the US to see this, and loaned uh, to us by a great member, Victor Pedro. Um, it's a terrific car that reminds you of a possibility and looks forward, frankly, to the fact that who knew back in 1978 when they introduced this car that Porsche would make four-door sedans like the Panamera and the Taycan, not to mention an SUV. Right. So it's, it's a car that really speaks to me. One of the other things, of course, is very controversial about this car, much, again, like the Ferrari 400, was the fact that most of them were sold with automatics. Right. And it was quite a famous thing, I've thought about this a lot, that the British magazine car, the racing driver Derek Bell, road tested one of these with the automatic, and he said he loved it. And there were all sorts of letters written in, how could you possibly love a car with an automatic? What are you talking about? Right. But there are certain cars that the automatic transmission actually suits the characteristics of the car itself better. And I think it, it suits the 92. Right, but like I say, it's what you, it's like most guys just order the large pizza because I'm not that hungry, but what if the small one is really too small? You, you always want to have- You want to err on the side uh, of yeah, too on, much. On your side. That's right, and, and most people do. You know, uh, as you become more mature, horsepower isn't as important, but I remember I passed on an NSX because 276 horsepower, even a base Corvette had 350. It, it just seemed like I'm, I'm paying for something that's a lot slow. Uh, horsepower sells cars. Torque wins races. Right. But horsepower sells cars. So the idea that, ooh, other car Vipers had 400 when that had 276. Gee, I'm going to get the Viper. I, I, you know, this obviously might have been a more sophisticated package mm -hmm. and better handling, but horsepower is, is what sells, you know. So what do you think, you said you, you didn't buy one of these when they were new. 
but can you understand why people are looking at them now as a classic? Well, we love noble failures. We like things that are, weren't successful in their time or ahead of their time, in their time. When this was a car of the future, unfortunately the future, uh, the future is very slowly in automobile. You, you can't, the shock of the new is too great for most people. The idea that you've, you've been told the rear engine is best. I mean, that, I used to see the t-shirt, rear engine is best, and well, you know, all that kind of stuff. You go to Rear engine is absolutely best, air-cooled is absolutely best, except for these other cars which are going to sell you, which yeah. happen to be front engine Yeah, but then you come along water-cooled. and you throw all of that out the window. It's like, what? You know, so it, yeah, it was, it was a shock. It wasn't introduced slowly. You know, the 914 had the same problem. Uh, what, what, you know? Uh, but yeah, I, I would love to have one today, but not with an automatic, it doesn't interest me. Well, it'll be very interesting um, to drive one of these automatic and stick back to back, like uh, like I've done here on the Audrain network with the two Ferraris. And yeah. uh, that's a great video to take a look at. You know, it's interesting. To me, Audi let me borrow one of the V10s when they first came out mm-hmm. with the gated shifter. It was the greatest it, it, just, it clicked, clicked, it was like a rifle bolt, like the cock it, pull it back, push it forward, lock it down. It was, it was so much fun to drive. Then I drove the automatic one. It just seemed like a car. It was okay. I mean, it was nice, but it didn't have that visceral. I wasn't involved with it. So to me, a manual always, I know it's slower. Mm-hmm. I mean, I bought a, a, a Hellcat in 2015, the first year, with a six-speed, a black six-speed tan interior. Now it's a rare desirable car. It's not as fast as the eight-speed manual, uh, automatic, but it's just fun to drive. I, I have a connection with the car, you know. This is, I, for the same money, I would probably get the Mercedes AMG, and then I have a real back seat, and it, it's not quite, it, it's a little more stealthy in Q-ship than this would be. In another uh, video that we're going to shoot, we're gonna take a look at a more practical version of a high-performance car that may answer some of those questions for you. So Hmm. stay tuned here on the Adrian Museum Network to see what car might just satisfy Jay in this Young Timer Classics exhibition.